It's day three of Can't Get Online Week, event four, and we're here in Leek, and I'm with Claire White and Melissa Worth. Um, we've been involved in a very interesting discussion with uh, some people from in and around the Leek area. Um, who wants to kick off and tell me some of the issues that came out of the meeting that we've just had? I think um, there was, the, the, it was definitely discussed um, about whether online communities um, can replace or supplement face-to-face -face communities. Um, so, so we explored that a little bit um, and also looked at some of the issues that are specific to this area, which is although we've got reasonable broadband in the town centre, we haven't got um, community spaces where we can share our skills. Um, mm. uh, and in the, in the hinterland of the town, um, there are areas with very poor broadband, very poor mobile signals as well. So um, engaging people there, it's how to get them to upgrade their skills with poor equipment and what comes first, you know, to get the maximum benefit. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I think as well, um, it, it was very much about thinking about not just broadband for the sake of it, but how do you connect um, the issues of connection with what's most important to people. So we, we looked at the fact that people might not actually see, especially in difficult climates, broadband as number one on their list of priorities. Um, so that being the case, um, how do we ensure that the broadband and technology um, is actually doing something about people's key priorities, which are probably things like work, but also yeah. when it comes to older people, um, is about being able to stay independent for longer and being able to use, continue to use technology when they, um, when they have uh, disabilities. And I thought one of the biggest things that we can perhaps take and move forward with is, is, is two things. One is to create gathering spaces for people to access the information because it's very clear that if communities are not online they find it much harder to access the information that could help. Um, and then the second thing is, is, is probably within areas of like this of actually um, communicating those benefits and working one of the interests I had about today was working with some of the more traditional organisations um, and looking at how they might be able to revive, um, you know, and, and really continue the thread of um, community organising that's been a bedrock of, of communities and towns and areas like this, um, how we can make sure that that can continue to thrive. Yeah, I, I thought a quite an interesting theme was um, organisations which are ageing, you know, they're, they're activists are literally dying out and um, but they're not embracing the online world, which is the way that they might attract, attract new activists. Um, I wonder how, what you thought about that. Well, this, this, the, 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 the WEA are a good example of that. We, we, we found this at our conference, a lot of WEA branches that are, you know, that they've been in North Staff since 1908. Um, they're hugely um, valuable within communities and within the democratic life of communities. Um, in terms of the learning they've been doing over the last hundred years and the content that they produce as well. Um, but some, many of the, the chair and voluntary positions are in their 80s um, and they struggle hugely to recruit people to the, to, the, to the positions that are absolutely key to keeping them going, which is chair and treasurer. Um, and people who are online know now that there are ways of doing that kind of organisation, perhaps you know, without having a bank account or without having some of the bureaucratic um, things that, that, that do put people off getting involved in committees. Um, but there's a lack of connection and knowledge between, between those organisations. So I'm hopeful that we can follow up and overcome um, some of those, those fears from both sides, really. Mm, okay. And also, I think having, having the, the tools um, so that people with less time can make decisions and do the research and share their information um, mm. online, which uh, you've got a, a cultural gap, haven't you, between mm. generations there. Yeah. I think another interesting thing as well is how when, when there is an issue that are, are engaging new people uh, in, into new groups, how powerful um, the technology technology can be if it's appropriate and it's simple to use and if it reaches the right people. Um, so it's a matter of getting this, these three people with passion and knowledge to 
uh, be able to have a forum to bring in all the other people who care, but who wouldn't necessarily stand up and pull it together. Mm. Uh, and I, I think I've seen lately Facebook working very well, Twitter working well, a little blog working well, and also some really uh, exciting, well-attended meetings happening around uh, specific areas, specific issues, um, and specific interests as well. So it can, it can just be like oxygen, really, mm. the right technology. Okay. And do you think anything will change as a result of discussions we've had this morning? Now you've come here, John, mm -hmm. full of hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Um, yeah, no, we, I mean, we would like to, um, we definitely hope that we've got a new Titanic pub coming and uh, they've been very supportive um, within the area, um, supporting social media surgeries around the whole county. So we hope we can bring that to leak. Um, and we'll be talking to the people who organise that about that. Um, and I think as well, well, we'll we'll maybe try and do this with a bit more run-in, so we'll try and connect with some of these groups that you do actually have to physically write letters to um, or ring up, and we'll maybe take a bit longer and see if see if we can pull together something that, that, that can just demonstrate some, some of these things and make some of the connections. So. Um, and also, I think we'll look at the links between. We, we did talk about the links between the potteries and the rural areas, um, and, and the, the towns and the cities, and people facing very similar issues in terms of the need to connect with, with, with you know, jobs and, and information um, and opportunities. Um, and I think, uh, as ever, there's there's a way to go, making sure that that, that movement sort of is connected and continues and um, can 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 benefit people and. and make it possible for people to keep living in Staffordshire, you know. Okay, thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. you.